All right, folks, just a quick video. Uh, it shouldn't take long on this one. The subject matter is you're not who you were, and in fact, you never were. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the point. You know, I've made videos about the fact that we are a new creation. And I've, I've made videos slightly looking at the fact that um, most people in church are somewhere between who they were and who they are. That's very relevant. The problem is, is that um, their understanding of that, and even, like I just said, who they were and who they are. The problem is, they were never who they were. That person never existed. No, because who they were was based upon who society, the world told them they were, who the negative influences in their life told them they were. Who even the overly positive influences in the life told them they were. Certainly, if you're a very pretty young lady, you're going to get told by men who want to date you or you know, what they want to do. You're going to be told that you are gorgeous. You are absolutely beautiful. You are stunning. You are you're electric. Your personality is absolutely fantastic. Why? Because <laughs> there, there's a reason for what they're saying. Um, yeah. If you're not so much of that, you're less likely to hear that. You're more likely to hear the opposite of that. But you see, in neither case are you what you've been told you are. One, you're being flattered overly to try and give you an impression that you are someone that you're actually not. Giving him a tick, tick, tick. That's coming from upstairs. Whether they're letting water drip down, I don't know. Sounds like it. Do I see making that tick, tick, tick noise? No, anyway. Whatever. Hmm. Um. Yeah. But the thing of it is, of course, people, most people, including me, do I understand who I am fully? Do I really understand who I am in God? And who I am is this new creation. No. No. So I have a part understanding of who I am. But the thing of it is, who I am is who I've always been. Because God knew from the start, from before I was born, he knew that my life would belong to him. He knew that I was a child of God. I was not a Christian. I was not a sinner. I was always a child of God. I just needed to walk in that. That was it. Because that was always what I was. As I've said sort of briefly before, if Yeshua is our righteousness. And all the things that he has never been are the things that we have never been. Now the list is endless. Certainly everything that the world tells you you are, Yeshua has never been. So that can't be you, can it? Because you are a child of God. You are a son or daughter of God. You are raised to be seated in heavenly places. That's you. He is your righteousness. Your righteousness is dependent upon his righteousness. His righteousness will never change. So your righteousness has never changed from day one to now. It doesn't matter what you've done in your life. In God's eyes... As, as in who you are, you never did those things. Even though according to the law of the land that we live in, you did. Certainly if you broke the law, then yeah, you did that according to the law of the land because they keep a record of it. God doesn't. Yeah, because your righteousness is not based upon the good or the bad that you've done. You don't lose righteousness based on bad. You don't gain righteousness based on good. 
Your works, your tithing, your fasting has nothing to do with your righteousness. Your righteousness and where it was, where it is, where it always will be was decided basically way before the cross. God had it all planned. God knew that there's no way could I ever have reached God without the Lord. Without Yeshua giving his life, without Yeshua paying for my sins, could I ever have reached the Father? Okay, look. Yeshua said, no one comes to the Father except through me. Right? In the Old Testament, you had to go through the veil to get to the Father. Yeshua is the torn veil. We go through the veil to get to the Holy of Holies, right? Yeshua is that veil. We go through him to get to the Father. Once you get to the Father, once you are a son of God, you don't need to go through him anymore. But again, this is where church understanding is just... A, uh, because there will be some churches that actually teach you've got to keep going through him to get to the Father. No. No. You've gone through him, so now you have access. That access is never denied. Why would it be? As I say, that access is not determined upon your righteousness. It's determined upon his and he's never done the things that you've done so neither of you. You, know, you have no sin because he had no sin. Does that mean you've never sinned? No. It means that when you repent, you've never sinned. Your past sin is not a sin. That's been paid for. Gone. Dealt with. You are cleansed of that. That's reality. It's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. Oh, people in the world, they want to remind you of your sin. Oh, yeah, of course. Right? They want to remind everyone because that's the whole point. Drag people back down the dirt. As soon as someone tries to lift themselves up, drag them back down again. Oh, but you're this, but you're this, but you're this, but you're this, but you're this. Unless you're wealthy and powerful. If you have tons of money, if you have the right friends, then they can't really do that because you're going to squish them. They know you're going to squish them because you are in position of power. That's how the world works. Yes? Certainly if you are relatively poor, you are knackered. If you walk according to how you should walk as a child of God, as to who you are, who you always have been, you know who you are, you know who God is, you know that what the world says you are, yeah, that lies. That's based upon an understanding that is deaf. So, who cares about that? You go to the understanding, it is life. That's God. You start to understand that God is your source. You're not. Nothing of this earth can be your source. God is your source. You start to understand it. You start to walk in it. As you start to walk in that, you start to grow. As you start to grow, you start to become the person with or who looks like, according to the world, who's got the power and all that sort of stuff. But as I said, then it's a case where you give freely. Because what, when God has given freely, you give freely. Because what you have doesn't matter. If you think you've worked for it, then it matters then it's something you don't want to lose. You hold on to it tightly because you don't want to lose it. 
I said with regards to marriage, if you know that God has given that marriage, you know that God has given you that wife, given her to you and you to her, it's God given. You don't need to be afraid of losing it because if God has given it, he's not going to take it away. Do you give that relationship to God? Do you trust in him? He is the source for your marriage. He is the provider for your marriage, not you. Husband, stop trying to see yourself as a provider because you can't do that. That's a worldly concept, not a godly concept. You can't be a Christian husband and see yourself as a provider. It won't work. You're mixing two different worlds. God will not provide for you if you're trying to be the provider. In any way, shape or form. Only when you give it up to God, only when you understand that there's nothing you can do. And you just have to trust in God. Even if you're trusting in God and it's through gritted teeth. <laughs> God can work with that. Because at least you're trusting in him. At least you're looking to him as your source. Rather than yourself. Who you are has never been based on anything you could or could not do. Or what you were able or unable to do. Of how the church sees you. How the world sees you. How anyone other than God sees you. It doesn't matter in any way, shape or form. What matters is, how does God see you? That's the reality. As soon as you understand that, as soon as you can walk in that, you leave all this other stuff behind you. It doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter. The problems of the world doesn't matter. How the world judges people doesn't matter. That's why you, when you see people, you see people based on God's love for them because you know that his love was given to you freely. So you give it. You don't charge it. It's not based upon what anyone else does because it's not based upon whether they're sin-free because it was never based on you being sin-free. So you give love. You walk how Yeshua walked because he didn't judge people. He gave freely. He loved people. He didn't pass judgment. He only passed judgment on those who were passing judgment. And there are going to be times when God wants you to do that. Especially anyone who tries to sort of put themselves above and pretend that they are they are you know, righteous and Yeah, sometimes it's right to smack people down. Yeah, the Lord did it, so you're going to have to. But again, you do it in understanding. This is what God wants you to do. This is how God is leading you to respond to the situation. Yeah. You never do it to make yourself look good. Because when you see yourself as God sees you, who are you ever going to try to impress? Who in this world are you ever going to try to impress? What's the need of it? Ever. Yeah. When God says, this is my beloved son, this is my beloved daughter, in whom I'm well pleased. What can anyone else say? They can get anywhere near that. Yeah. I say, I don't care what any human being thinks of me. I couldn't care less. 
No concern at all. If God is pleased with me, then I'm sorted. That's why I say with regards to swearing, I don't need to worry about that. Not at all. If God wants me to stop swearing, then he's going he's gonna to deal with me on that. I'm not worried about it in any way, shape or form. All this churchy crap. Oh, you can't swear because you're a Christian. Oh, shut up. Shut up. Idiots. Your understanding is based upon the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is demonic. That's the devil. That's not God in any way, shape or form. That's why I've said for a while, pray, seek God. Who are you? Who is he? Who are you? Who is he? Who are you? Who is he? You are not who you were. You are not who they say you were. Because you were never evil of those things. That's the reality. That's the true reality in the picture. The problem is, is that a lot of people can't walk in that because they see themselves as church. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. They do indeed. Well, that's something that God's going to have to deal with, isn't it, really? Yep. That's something to God to deal with, that. Huh? I'm not worried about it. Nope. God's going to deal with it in his way. I'm not concerned. This video is because I was sitting here saying to the Lord, is there anything you want me to talk about? And God says, uh, you know who you are. And I said, Lord, I've done that one. He said, you know who you, who they say you are. I said, okay, all right. <laughs> okay, I'll do a video. Yes. Indeed. There you go. You take care, God bless. I will leave you to it now. You have a wonderful evening and a wonderful night and a fantastic rest of the week. God bless. Bye-bye.